The Miseducation of the Negro, Chapter 1, The Seat of the Trouble. The educated Negroes had the attitude of contempt toward their own people because in their own as well as in their mixed schools, Negroes are taught to admire the Hebrew, the Greek, the Latin, and the Teuton and to despise the Negro. Of the hundreds of Negro high schools recently examined by an expert in the United States Bureau of Education, only 18 offer a course taking up the history of the Negro. And in most of the Negro colleges and universities where the Negro is thought of, the race is studied only as a problem or dismissed as of little consequence. For example, an officer of a Negro university, thinking that an additional course on the Negro should be given there, called upon a Negro director of philosophy of the faculty to offer such work. He promptly informed the other officer that he knew nothing about the Negro. He did not go to school to waste his time that way. He went to be educated in a system which dismissed the Negro as a non-entity. At a Negro summer school two years ago, a white instructor gave a course on the Negro using for his text a work which teaches that whites are superior to the blacks. When asked by one of the students why he used such a textbook, the instructor replied that he wanted them to get their point of view. Even schools for Negroes, then, are places where they must be convinced of their inferiority. The thought of the inferiority of the Negro is drilled into him in almost every class he enters and in almost every book he studies. If he happens to leave school after he masters the fundamentals, before he finishes high school or reaches college, he will naturally escape some of this bias and may recover in time to be of service to his people. Practically, all of the successful Negroes in this country are of the uneducated type or that of Negroes who have had no formal education at all. The large majority of the Negroes who have put on the finishing touches of our best colleges are all but worthless in the development of their people. If after leaving school they have the opportunity to give out to Negroes what traducers of the race would like to have it learned, such persons may thereby earn a living at teaching or preaching what they have been taught, but they never become a constructive force in the development of the race. The so-called school then becomes a questionable factor in the life of this despised people. As another has well said, to handicap a student by teaching him that his black face is a curse and that his struggle to change his condition is hopeless is the worst sort of lynching. It kills one's aspirations and dooms him to vagabondage and crime. It is strange then that the friends of truth and the promoters of freedom have not risen up against the present propaganda in the schools and crushed it. This crusade is much more important than the anti-lynching movement because there will be no lynching if it did not start in the schoolroom. Why not exploit, enslave, or exterminate a class that everybody is taught to regard as inferior? To be more explicit, we may go to the seat of the trouble. Our most widely known scholars have been trained in universities outside of the South. Northern and Western institutions, however, have had no time to deal with matters which concern the Negro especially. They must direct their attention to the problems of the majority of their constituents, and too often they have stimulated their prejudices by referring to the Negro as unworthy of consideration. Most of what these universities have offered as language, mathematics, and science may have served a good purpose, but much of what they have taught as economics, history, and literature, religion, and philosophy is propaganda, and can't that involve a waste of time and misdirected the Negroes thus trained? And even in the certitude of science or mathematics, it can be unfortunate that the approach to the Negro has been borrowed from a foreign method. For example, the teaching of arithmetic in the fifth grade in a backward county in Mississippi should mean one thing in the Negro school and a decidedly different thing in the white school. The Negro children, as a rule, come from the homes of the tenants and peons who have to migrate annually from plantation to plantation looking for light which they have never seen. The children from the homes of the white planters and merchants live permanently in the midst of calculations, family budgets, and the like, which enable them sometimes to learn more by contact than the Negro can acquire in school. Instead of teaching such Negro children less arithmetic, they should be taught much more of it than the white children, for the latter attended a graded school consolidated by free transportation when the Negroes go to one-room rented hovels to be taught without equipment and by incompetent teachers educated scarcely beyond the eighth grade. In schools of theology, Negroes are taught the interpretation of the Bible, worked out by those who have justified segregation and went that the economic debasement of the Negro, sometimes almost to the point of starvation. 
deriving their sense of right from this teaching, graduates of such schools can have no message to grip the people whom they have been ill-trained to serve. Most of such miseducated ministers, therefore, preach to benches while illiterate Negro preachers do the best they can in supplying the spiritual needs of the masses. In the schools of business administration, Negroes are trained exclusively in the psychology and economics of Wall Street and are therefore made to despise the opportunities to run ice wagons, push banana carts, and sell peanuts among their own people. Foreigners who have not studied economics but have studied Negroes take up this business to grow rich. In schools of journalism, Negroes are being taught how to edit such metropolitan dailies as the Chicago Tribune and the New York Times, which would hardly hire a Negro as a janitor. And when these graduates come to the Negro weeklies for employment, they are not prepared to function in such establishments, which to be successful must be built upon accurate knowledge of the psychology and philosophy of the Negro. When a Negro has finished his education in our schools, then he has been equipped to begin the life of an Americanized or Europeanized white man. But before he steps from the threshold of his alma mater, he is told by his teachers that he must go back to his own people from whom he has been estranged by a vision of ideas in which his disillusionment he will realize that he cannot attain. Welcome back to Breakdown Friday, Joseph Ward, Patrick Irvin, Professor Carl Tone Jones. And as you can see by the clip, we are diving into, and it's the first section of chapter one of the Miseducation of the Negro by Carter G. Woodson. And um, I wrote, you know, as always, we write down some notes as the video goes. Um, I chose this clip because of a lot of the things that... Uh, Carter G. Woodson was talking about. Of course, we've covered these things in, in past breakdowns, but I wanted to kind of take a deep dive into um, the inferiority complex, but I like how he's um, digging into how this inferiority complex is, is taught to us, but also how it manifests itself even in the eyes or how it manifests itself and it can be masked even by those who we would see as ultra successful because he's getting into talking about how a, a group of educated people can't really help us get to the finish line and so the uh chapter one is actually the title of it chapter one is the seat the seat the seat of the table right in the seat of the table one of the things he was getting into is the black inferiority so pc man you know this right sure. down your alley so let's get into <laughs> this black inferiority because i and i and you can reference um for what you remember in the book uh but let's get into this black inferiority kind of like let's let's break down first what black inferiority is and then get into how dr carter g woodson was talking about how it was um how it is taught through the education system and reinforced through the society well, I think, you know, just in layman's terms, you know, the black inferiority complex is, is seeing yourself as less than because you're not white. And uh, and it's like racial envy. Uh, you know, you see white people as the standard the barometer, the ruler. You know, uh, one of the things we talked about last week was the fact that most black people look at each other as being niggas. And they see most black people look at themselves through the lens of white folks. And that is, you know, where this becomes, in, you know, so the academics believe that they are um, the exceptions to the rule. Those who become financially stable or financially in a, uh, you know, socially, economically, um, in one of those higher classes, they actually see themselves as not being as black as us and actually seeing themselves as being honorary white. I'll never forget watching the post game. Uh, show with Charles Barkley on um, one of those networks and he was and I think it was about we were talking about at that time that was Trayvon Martin the Mike Brown's uh, situation Eric Gardner situation was going on going viral and he said that you know he was pointing to himself and other rich black people and he said when you're rich and black you really don't you know you sort of like elevate past race you don't necessarily be you're not necessarily seen as being black anymore. You're seen as being honorary white because of your status, your wealth and your status. And 
that's how a lot of academics think. I mean, think about the conversation that we have about the high value man or the or the educated woman. And when you think about those conversations, a lot of those conversations derive around this is the status quo of how black people live. So when you look at it, you're talking about maybe the top five to six percent of both black men and black women who live there. But that's where the conversation is, because they don't even acknowledge the brothers and sisters who are still struggling to just make ends meet or just struggling to get by. Right. And the average person doesn't exist. Right. Invisible. And so and quite honestly, they probably do wish that the average black people just wander off into the wilderness, never to be seen or heard from again. Right. So, um, so, so in a nutshell, that's, that's, that's how, you know, we see, I see that. Um, and then there's this, you know, uh, there's this distinction that, uh, black people suffer from. And, and this is one of the reasons why I think we weren't able to hold on to those black boom towns. That, the, that developed out of the Reconstruction era. Because when you looked at those towns, they were very successful, but they were emulating the white town. Mm -hmm. If the white man had a uh, had the theater, now we want a theater. If the white man had uh, a hospital that was, that was geared a certain way, we wanted to have that. If they had a bus company, we wanted a bus company. But also, if a white man had wait staff, if they had waiters or if they had maids, if they had butlers. Now we want butlers and we want maids. And so when you look at that, they just basically they were carbon copies of the white community. And it goes back to um W. E. B. Du Bois, who actually was a protege of JD Rockefeller. And it was one of those things where you create when especially when you talk about the talented ten and the from what his vision of what the talented temp was supposed to be and what it actually became. It was taken from a white man as well. Right. And there you go. So, you know, um, everything that black people have done to this point is to get to this status of white um, in this country. Well, I'm not going to say everything, but when you start talking about those who consider themselves in the elite of black people, that's been their... Uh, yardstick and that's what they've been you know that's that's the way they try to um that's the way they move <laughs> yeah 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 um to just make this point real quick um you made me think about uh the one of the shorts i just put out the other day about anthony johnson the first um the first black person to well the black person to introduce chattel slavery um mm -hmm. it was an indentured servant who when he gained his freedom he said well the white man owns land the slaves i want to own land the slaves because the white man own it and you know trying to emulate the, the white society but um the organizations or what it means to be successful for black people and it's really not even just in america throughout the diaspora the the um the goal is whiteness the the they don't have it has to resemble whiteness it has to be the opulence that the white people um deem as opulent because think about all of the all of the black people who break themselves to have luxury brands because Bruh. the white people have the luxury brands so now now I go ahead really want because you really tapped into something i'm gonna leave some of this for pat because i know pat about to go in but when you talk about in africa the fact that when their judicial system is set up the same way the European uh, judicial system is where them wearing, wearing powdered wigs, you know, um, <laughs> when they, and having trials, not going back to the traditional ways, but but emulating these Europeans. When you talk about the Pan Atlantic, it used to be the Pan Atlantic Eight, now it's the Pan Atlantic Nine. Well, what are they emulating? What are these fraternities in, emulating? Well, because white fraternities wouldn't let us in, we we built black ones. Well. Why did you build a Jack and Jill, um, the boule, you know, all these different aspects of when the boule is just a replica of skull and bone, you know. So we, we get to see it over and over and over again. Um, so, so I'm going to leave it there because I know we have a lot more to cover in this so, particular. Um, 
video. So, Pat, I want you to take uh, inferiority complex from the angle of what uh, Dr. Carter G. Woodson is talking about because PC laid the groundwork of what you know inferiority complex is. But as far as inferiority complex being um, passed down from one generation to the next through the education system, let's talk about that. How were how were black kids taught to be inferior? Uh, it goes back. <clears throat> we're talking about cultural transmission and understanding what the education system actually is. It's a system of indoctrination. You know, it's a system of inculcation that, that like, and that's not a bad thing. Like we need people to understand that's not a bad thing. That's what all education systems are. Even if we created our own education system, you're doing the same we, thing. Right. You're, you're indoctrinating your children into your ways of thinking, being, and existing um, under the belief and assumption that your ways of thinking, being, and existing are what's best for you in the future because they have been what's best for you in the past. Unless you're making an adjustment because you're a black person in America and you finally understand it, what was happening in the past ain't what's best for you no more, so you got to do something new. But that's neither here nor there. Um, so when you when, when you send your kid into the education system, most of us unwittingly, we, like we don't have any malice when we're doing it. We're thinking we're doing what's best for our kids. Like you hear people now, you got to teach the classics something like that right you got to teach the classic you got to teach uh homer you got to teach um uh, right shakespeare you got to teach these these pieces that are considered the classics because kids need to know that to get into college and then when they go to college they need to learn other things that further drive them away from the things that they might need to understand in order to, to to be a benefit to their race. And what you end up having now is a child that was never taught to appreciate themselves, appreciate people that look like them, or to truly understand and appreciate the contributions that they've made to society. And like we talked about in the last show, if you don't actively teach black children, if you don't actively teach children, period, not to be racist in america they're going to be racist in america that's what's going to happen uh and so i think one of the things that dr carter g woodson is is really trying to get people to understand is that if you don't take a proactive approach to educating black children about the contributions the beauty and the necessity for black thought and black progression intentional black thought and black progression then you're creating a situation where black people are going to continue to be in a position of inferiority mm -hmm. because everything else that's being poured into them puts them in a position of having a weak hand mm -hmm. and it, it goes back to something we're always saying right like Black people have got to be proactive about the things we do. I'm not going to sit here and say everything white people do is negative. There are a lot of things we could take from white people and use it uh, to, to, to be beneficial to us. But it's not a direct take. It's got to be altered some kind of way. That's where the thought comes in. If you're a black person and you want to start a business, there's nothing wrong with studying white businesses to figure out how they've been <clears> successful. <throat> the problem comes in when you try to duplicate one to one everything right. that that black business, that white business, and this is the problem we have because, like PC pointed out, and like you pointed, like you pointed out, out, every single every time uh, black people decide they need something. It's a one-to-one -one taking. White people won't let us into their club. Fine, we'll start our own club, the Divine Nine. Like, ain't nothing divine about y'all. Y'all are copycats. You know what I'm saying? Uh, white people won't let us play their sports. We're going to start our own sports leagues. Okay, what are we going to do different? Absolutely nothing. We're going to do it just like they do it. Oh, okay. 
you know, we're going to start our own schools. Okay, what's going to be different about our schools? We're going to teach pro-black stuff, right? No, we're going to teach the same thing they do. We're just going to have black teachers teaching black students the same white indoctrination. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that should work. Great. Uh, so, yeah. I might be making up a word here. All words. But, you, hey, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, what you, but what you talk about, Pat, though, is, okay, Black people who believe that they belong in white circles were rejected from these white circles, a la Kanye West. That just recently happened not too mm-hmm. long ago. Uh, so in turn, they created their own version of these white organizations, these black ran organizations that were that were created with the white mind. And then within these black organizations, intra inferiority was happening because or or the superiority complex of some black people over the others because we're getting into that that's part we're gonna get into into this um but um that that inferiority complex that's being passed down or that's being created in the environment in an in an all-black environment so other black people are making black people feel inferior because I'm a part of this and you are not a part of this. So therefore I am better than you because I'm a part of this organization that resembles this white organization. And mm-hmm. therefore we are separated. We are not the same. I can't see you as my brother. I can't see you as my sister, even trickle down to what a lot of things that we see today. Like PC was saying, if you are not, if you don't, if you're not a white collar worker, if you don't have a master's, a, a bachelor's, a PhD, if you are not in these organizations, then you are not worthy of my attention. You're not mm-hmm. worthy of my presence. That's insanity at its finest. It's, I know, because think about it. These are the same people who will complain about white people not allowing them in their mm-hmm. spaces and turn around and do that to other black people. Absolutely. And it's because now I have the opportunity to do this so my miseducated self is going to take the opportunity to do the same thing because that's a part of the mimicking of white people. I have to mimic the the uh, this oppression. I have to mimic oppression because I can't really oppress you. So I have to do as much as I can. So I can't. I can stop you from being in this organization. You know. So that's that's um, that's the niggotry that goes into it. Mm-hmm. What's funny though is. As I was preparing for this video, um, I was scrolling through like TikTok, trying to just find some videos that I can use to compliment the clip. And I mess around and type something about niggas on TikTok. And because I just I just type whatever and see what I come up with. And it was a whole it's it's a whole bunch of videos of people that were either promoting niggatry or saying we got to separate ourselves from this niggatry. But a separation is going to have to happen from the black people who continue to um, continue to uh, keep the the miseducated mindsets going, who continue to keep the niggatry going, no matter what realm of society that they come from, no matter what realm of the community they come from. Um, we see that there are a, a, a lot of people who are conditioned to be destructive whether they know it or not and their destruction may not their level of destruction may not be great their level of destruction could be something that others may not even deem as destruction but everywhere they go they causing problems so you might not be dealing crack you might not be murdering people you might not be doing a whole lot of things but everywhere you go you causing problems you causing division mm-hmm. so yeah and you're supposed to be educated well, you know, the, the funny thing about that um, is Malcolm X said one of his most famous quotes is only a fool will let, allow their enemy to educate their children. Uh-huh. And you know, and we go further than that. You know, they educate our children, they educated us, and they also feed us. And, you know, uh, some of the things that, and I just jotted down a few things while we were talking. Um, but going back to what we y'all were talking about, 
we keep fucking following them everywhere they go. We do. Um, we do. We do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, there were plenty of opportunities for black people to continue to maintain separate towns throughout the South and the Midwest with all that space that was still available. Now, but, you know, for whatever reason, we wanted to go to the edge of a developed town that was already white. And that also led to some of the issues that we had in terms of protecting those towns when those white folk got, got jealous of the prosperity they were seeing. But we also had situations where every time white folk go and build something, black folk want to be there too. So We belong. Yeah, right. Like, uh, and you talk about white flight. White flight takes place when too many black people or non-white people move into an area. And the tipping, uh, tipping scale has been like at 30%. So once 30% of the neighborhoods get saturated, the other 70, the, the 70 percent of white folk who are already there start leaving. Um, they moved out, they created Sundown Town. There's a whole book called Sundown Town that speaks about a man, I forget his name, but his name was Levis, but he created a town, Levitt Town. And um, he created Levitt Towns all over the country, designed as white only town. And if you go to any of those towns right now, they have substantial black population, you know, and these were sundown towns. Um, it's even like talk, people joke about it now and they say when white folk go to the moon or they go to Mars, black folk going to be trying to figure out how to get up there with them. It's like um, we can't ever just decide to, you know, uh, to build our own, empower our own, um, be responsible for our own. We always want to see, seem to feel as though that we must be in proximity to white folk. And so when, you, when, we, when we move down this, and, and in the book, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, who is one of my favorite scholars, um, he speaks on the fact that we gave up power to join their ranks. Mm -hmm. We gave up ownership to join their ranks. We gave up owning, like, the, he, he, one of the things he talked about was the shame that was that was aimed towards the man who brought ice and, and that, that brought the ice truck down the block. So we would rather have a, 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 a white collar and a tie on and, and work a job than, than, than own that particular industry in black community. So now you have the Mexican come in and they're pushing the ice truck. Now they're doing the fruit trucks and things of that nature. You have all these different groups coming in that's just taking over because they see, you know, the self-sufficiency, the need for self-sufficiency in order to, to provide that. So they don't have to be beggars. You know, they can actually walk to, to the so-called table with their own power. And we can't seem to do that. Um, and, and, I mean, one of the greatest exam examples of that was the Negro Leagues. Like, that's something we emul emulated white folk, but it was better than the Major League Baseball system. And when we gave that up, integrated, gave that up, JRS Center, when we gave that up, we – uh. Not only lost the baseball team, but all the different things. You had, you know, the guys that was making the peanut, the peanut company, they ran out of business. The 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 because nobody was able, no, nobody non-black was selling were, 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 were um selling those products inside those stadiums. The uniform makers, all these different people that had these businesses within the Negro League lost. And they weren't they weren't absorbed into the collective, the board, they weren't absorbed into that. And then they were, you know, look at our communities now. So you now you see now you just connected this book to powernomics. You just because you just you uh what you're talking about is uh when Dr. Anderson getting into talking about ethno aggregation mm -hmm. and vertical integration. Mm -hmm. You know, and we need white people. Not saying us three and those listening, but I believe the majority of black people need white people. That's why we follow them. We all have seen panels of some sort of black people complaining about white flight. Mm -hmm. As if as if white people are wrong for wanting to be around white people. Like when 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 black people get mad at white people for saying I only want to marry and have babies with white people. Black people get mad, but they feel the same way. But you can't say it. See, black people, we, that this, this JRS is real. That's why we, we that's probably going to be the next show. This, this JRS is real because it's 
I have a need, I have a need to be accepted by white people. I have a need to be around white people. I have a need to learn everything about everybody else except myself, because that's one of the things, that, uh, first, the first part of the chapter, the educated Negroes have the attitude of contempt toward their own people because their own, because in their own, as well as in their mid schools, Negroes are taught to admire the Hebrew, the Greek, the Latin, the Teuton, and to despise the African. So we want to be like everybody else but us. We admire everybody else but us. That's why we want to travel and go to all these exotic places and be everywhere that everybody else want to be. We want to do what everybody else wants to do. That's one That's one of the things Neela Fuller talked about in the compensatory code. I see all these things uh, connecting right. together. You see a real kind of thing. Right, right, because because all of these gentlemen, well, all, all of these scholars, like we've like we said, and that's the reason why we started doing these breakdowns because we're realizing the connections that all of these scholars have, and it's on us to put the pieces of the puzzle together so we can use this stuff. But thinking about if if we can't see ourselves as a group of people, as a team, as 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 a race, we can't see ourselves as one. There's no way that we can get into building anything, and nothing's going to happen, and we'll never improve anything else. And it's and for those for if it does happen, it's going to happen for a small subset of people. It's not going to happen for the majority of the people. And I just believe that that's just what we are right now, because I just believe we our brains are just that much gone. So what I think the challenge. The challenge with anything is getting enough people together to actually make anything work and the the, the brilliance of the dysfunction and the delusion is that you know it goes back to a conversation pc and i was having about the relationships within the black community in particular but this is what happens when you have a bunch of drones yeah that don't know that they drones yeah being drones like because everybody thinks they're a queen or a king everybody thinks they're it they got it figured out or they, everybody thinks that what 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 is in their head is reality and and not enough people are actually sitting back and looking at the truth of what we're dealing with the the actual facts of a situation and making the real reality be their reality. Like there's nothing that's bothering me more over the last few years than the explosion of the acceptance of the narrative of the personal truth. Like, I, I, like what does that mean? Well, well, since you went there, <laughs> let's rip this goddamn Band-Aid off. Since you went there, conscious com the conscious community is some of the biggest motherfuckers of their personal truth. Because no matter what's going on in the real world, the conscious community, we're going to make up what we want to make up. That's how we get to this king, queen thing, and nobody's acting like kings and queens. That's how we get to be gods and goddesses, but nobody's acting like gods and goddesses. That's how we get to concentrate only on Africa and don't do nothing for ourselves here. Delusional. The, the funny part is, because the delusion is so thorough that... 90% of the community, I'm just throwing the number out there. Say, I don't need nobody talking about, he just okay. pulling numbers out. I'm openly admitting, I'm just pulling this number out. 90% of the community thinks that they're living like the top 5 to 10%. Even though their real life is showing them, yeah. no, you're not. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> but the, 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 and here's the thing, right? If you're really a God, why would anybody worship you? Like you can't even fix shit for yourself. <laughs> why? 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 why but, what? What are you doing? That's the thing. That makes you worship worthy. Like, like I look around sometimes when I hear people say, uh, "I'm a, I'm a god," or, or "I'm a goddess." I'm like, well, if you're a goddess, I would never worship you. But, ever. But, but I think, I think also. We, because, and I'm saying we, because been a part of the conscious community for a while, so I ain't gonna sit like act like I ain't a part of it now, right? But we, when we, when we read 
the miseducation of the Negro. We were not thinking about ourselves as well. We were thinking about all the black folk who are not conscious. We never factored in ourselves and still, even though reading this, consuming the information, and even being able to may have some kind of understanding of it. We can see we didn't have full understanding of it because no practical application was, was, was applied, but we can't see improvement. I'm going to tell you like this, y'all. And I'm, I mean, you might have to bleep this out. Hmm? The the woke and conscious community are some of the dumb on the planet. They mm -hmm. all need to go to therapy. They all need to go <laughs> and get their diagnosis, their SSI check, sit the fuck down. Honestly, man, because look at all the confusion. How conscious are you if you can never accept accountability for where you are in life? If you can even can't even see it on the map. How account how account and then you look at the circumstances. All you want to do is sit around and debate. You walking around like you know and thinking you're emulating Jesus wearing rags and shit, walking around, and you want to just have debates. Debate. Nobody's ever been fed by debate except these cats running for public office. Um the, the majority of people hide in this delusion, like being a part of the matrix. Because they, as long as they stay here, they don't have to deal with the reality of the world we live in. And the reality of the world we live in, say, black people are losing because black people can't seem to get on the same page. We don't all, we always want to talk about, well, we're not, we're not a monolith. Uh, guess what? You treat it like one by your enemy. Your enemy makes you a monolith. And then you ain't powerful enough alone in this diverse, you know, I don't want to follow any rules as a society y'all try to create with this. Woke, this cloud of wokeness that we live in, this cloud of consciousness we live in, to the fact that they can continue to manipulate us. It's so to the point that black leaders this day, people who identify as black thought leaders this day, are no longer a threat to be under siege by the, the federal government. You don't hear about uh, shooting squads looking for you know people who identify as traveling lecturers. You don't uh, you don't see anybody uh, trying to uh, to 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 assassinate any of these uh, so-called leaders. Like, we had a president, black president. They made it look like his life was in danger, but if, it, if they took John Kennedy's head off at 2 o'clock in the afternoon in front of everybody. So... Back in the days. <laughs> right, we got right. sophisticated stuff now. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, when, when we understand the precarious position we're in, it's because most people are cowards. And that's what consciousness really is. I don't have to deal with you straight up, head up. I don't have to identify my enemy. In fact, I want to emulate my enemy. Therefore, I'm going to talk about all this stuff. See, I'm going to work my 9 to 5. And then from 5.30 to about 7, 8.30, I'm going to be black as shit. I'm going to be conscious on it. But then I'm going to go back to work. And I'm going to, hey, John, hey, Bill, how was your weekend? It was wonderful. Hey, can you get, give me a cup of joe? You going out and get coffee? You know, we put on those different masks when we go to those different places. And it's never about ever utilizing their resources to build something for ourselves. No. What? When we start talk, talking about the new black townships that are building this and building that, what do they look like? They're emulating white townships that are, are doing those different things. And when we start talking about the, 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 uh, the people who identify as, as conscious or people who identify, and, and Patrick is very, very generous with his number because I'm saying 99.5% of these motherfuckers is crazy as cat shit. <laughs> All right. When we start talking about what we're trying to, what, what, what to build and how to build it, for most people, they, 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 they live in delusions of grandeur. They don't even have enough money to pay their bills. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mostly don't even have a building. Don't even have a clubhouse, a place to congregate and meet. And but we want to talk, but but see, we want to live in this thing where we're at war with the white man. We listen, the white man warred on us, kicking our ass, and we just trying to be like him enough so he'll leave us the fuck alone. Well, also, just like we said about the fraternities, because everybody's getting it. I even threw myself in it, everybody's getting it, right. But just like we said, like at fraternities, the separation, the the superior versus the inferior. So if you are not a part of the conscious community, then you are inferior. Or if you're not a part of the boule, you're inferior. If you're not a part of a fraternity, you're inferior. We 
we put ourselves in these different pockets these un these different unproductive pockets and then we look at each other as enemies and white folk just sit back just laughing at us like yeah these these Negroes is crazy as hell. Look at look at how they separate themselves, and they really think they really think we like them. They really think we like them like that. And look at how they separate themselves and look down on each other. I'm a, I'm gonna give you an example. Meg Thee Stallion threw out the first pitch of the baseball season for the Houston Astros. Mm -hmm. Glammed up, respectable. All you know, girl, she looked presentable. I thought I was like, Wow, this is what she looked like cleaned up. She went to the country music awards, same thing, looked stunning, right? I didn't even know that was her until somebody said, Look at Meg the Stallion, and she's been introduced. And I'm thinking, What the fuck is she doing at the country music awards? Um, but then she's at the Essence Fest. Hey. I got, I got to shoot. You want to go, you want to go, nah, I can't say it like I want to say it, but you want to go story for story? Let's go. All right. Old girl, old girl uh, that that uh, took the butt naked pictures at FAMU, the the, the right. supposed uh, city girl, rapper girl. So, so gr remember graduating from FAMU was her master's. So that was her pose for her master's degree at an HBCU. Supposedly, mm -hmm. she graduated from USF for her undergrad. Where's mm -hmm. the butt naked pictures from USF? Yeah, it's like you know, you get the you get the permission to live a ratchet, uh, degenerative lifestyle as long as you're um, emulating black people. It's like the difference between the Wizard of Oz and the Wiz. Um, like the Wizard of Oz, they were going through different prairies. They were going through. Um, different plains and mountains. The Wiz motherfuckers is going through junkyards, the projects, um, all types of shit. But in, in the same token, still emulating the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> well, what, 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 what part are we talking about building up? And that's the thing that that is the biggest issue with, you know, one of the things Dr. Dr. Carter G. Wilson was talking about is the fact that we we want to be we want to have. Uh, we want to be the shiny token, like we want to be the white man's token. We 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 want to be the white man's minstrel. We want to be the white man's back mascot. We want to be the only Negro there. Some Negroes um, bragged about being, and I think I, I figured who talked about this. They said bragged about being the I'm the only Negro on my block. I think Malcolm talked about this. I'm the only Negro on my block. I'm the only Negro that worked in a company. And then listen. If you go to that company as a black person and there's another black person that work in that company, what's the first thing they're going to do? They're going to try to sabotage your ass. They're going to try to isolate you. They're going to try to, you know, cut your throat. And we've seen it over and over and over again. You know what I'm saying? They have no regard. You got to think, and I know we talk about being demoralized as people, but a lot of this stuff right now is just, we, we, we have really lost any sense of self and if we had any sense of self and this is all over the world you go it, it's, it's, a, it's a crying shame that in African countries that African language is their second language the European dialect that dominate their countries is their first language you shouldn't have nobody in Africa talking about well my first language is French what well, my first, I, I speak fluid Italian. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm cussing too much. Hey, yeah. hey so, hey, no, no. no. <laughs> so, 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 Pat. So, Pat. He, he, uh, uh, Carter G. Wilson also got into talking about how, um, he mentioned how the uneducated out earn the educated and the, or the uneducated can be more successful. And I, and I, I, I'm looking at that as two ways, but he also was talking about how the educated class, the leaders, the teachers, the preachers, and basically he's saying they won't be able to help us because of the indoctrination. Like, let's go a little further into that. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's twofold. One, when you're, when you're nation building, you need people with the hard skills. They tend to not be the educated class. You need your plumbers, your electricians, 
your construction workers, your, your hell, even your elevator operators and mechanics hold more value than the motherfucker that has a, a PhD and administrative assistantry. Well, um, I, I, I'm sorry not to cut you off, but I'm glad you I'm glad you said that because we have to hammer that home. We have to understand that the people who if anybody in infrastructure is way more important than you and your degree. I realize my garbage man is more important to my city and my community and my society than me. So we got to get over ourselves. Go ahead. My right, brother. right. And 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 we don't even understand right in terms of the the the, the value of the professions because there are cer certain professions where you need a degree. And then there are other professions where they just made it nice if you have a degree. We tend to get our degrees in the, the, the secondary group. You know, you you we're not getting degrees and becoming uh, doctors, lawyers, even though needing a degree to become a lawyer is a relatively new thing. But still, uh, mental health workers, therapists, we're not getting those types of credentials. You know, you meet somebody now. You'd be like, what you got a PhD in? Uh, you know, uh, you get you got a, a, a bachelor's in social work. Oh, yeah, you got license in anything? No, nah, I just got my bachelor's. Got a bachelor's. Yeah, you psychology. got a bachelor's in psychology. Right. Like you gonna do anything else? No, nah, that mm -hmm. oh you got a you got a PhD in education. Oh, you 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 needed that for to Make be that 40k. What like and that's the other part of it. So you get these degrees that don't require the job you get don't re really require you to have that degree because you don't look. Here's to deal with the requirements. If it's not a licensure or a certification, then somebody just wants you to have it. You don't need it. Let me say it again. If it's not a licensure or a certificate. If you don't have to sit in front of a government agency. And 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 take some sort of test or have a bunch of hours. If you're not held legally liable for the services you render in that regard, then really somebody that probably don't have a degree created a company and said, "Yeah, I want this person in this position to have a degree." You don't need the degree. And so then we get into another conversation about the types of education that we go after what does it mean what are we grooming these kids for that are in college getting you know getting these degrees because let's be clear about one other thing right ain't nobody sending you to college to start a business they sending you to college to be a worker mm -hmm. that's something else we got to be clear about look baby your, your degree don't make you a boss it makes you an employee that's what it's there for I don't understand, like, I'm going to say it again. Your degree makes you an employee. The boss don't need a degree. They the boss. Right, right, right. But I think we have to take a, a hard look at education because black people for long have said that education was our key to becoming free. No, we ain't got to take a long look at that, Joe. That's a short look. No. No, 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 no. That's maybe a short look for us, for the us's. <laughs> it ain't a short look for the weeds. Okay. All right. So, no, ahead. just being real, like it's not. I don't. I just. I know for everybody, there ain't no short look, and I think people. I think we have to say it. Some people really have to take a hard look at how we prioritize and and look at education and say, because really. In our community, if you graduate from college, you graduate from high school, it's a big deal. You graduate from college, then you're successful. And now you're finna go on and make a life and you finna be something in life. But it's like we all like like I learned when I graduated from college and I got a goddamn degree and I'm throwing newspapers and working on the catering staff for the civic center with everybody else who don't have a degree. Well shit. Well now. Now, but like you said earlier, my degree did get me somewhere where they was like, well, it'd be nice if you have it. Well, I think when we have this conversation, we got to have a, the conversation isn't college or not. The right. conversation has to start with 
what's the mean like what what does education mean for like, our I, community i'm with you i'm with you but that's the problem that is not that's that is not how we look at it. that's not how we talk about education we look at we like just like you said the, the first thing you said for us is college or bust and because we look at it like that we relegated ourselves to a to becoming no more than a labor class well yeah okay i can see that but i i think that requires a fundamental rethinking like just because you got a degree don't mean you educated right Right, just because you just because you 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 passed the test, you passed this grade, you promoted doesn't mean you smart. What's the practical application of all that means is like we today uh, intelligence really is that, and it and it shouldn't be, but we look at intelligence as the ability to complete task or last in that program. I completed this program, so now I'm intelligent, but I can't apply any of this information that I obtained while in this program. Huh. Well, this, and and as a, as a, you know, education is in terms of formal education is not that at all. Education is supposed to be something that gives you the tools to actually do the work yourself. Go out and acquire knowledge yourself. Go out and and deconstruct something in society or construct something in society yourself. That's what education is supposed to be. It's like learning to take the, you have to take a class to get your driver's permit. You have to take a class in order to do that so that you learn how to drive. You don't become a driver until you get on the road after you've gotten your license, like Pat was talking about earlier. You don't become that. So that's what education is supposed to be. It's not, but, but we don't see it as that. We see education as a standard. We see education as something that, uh, that once you achieve this goal, like this is this is who we are, and so we become a bunch of titles. We become a bunch of, uh, you know, we come we become bourgeois, uh, bullshitters, because yeah. none of this stuff actually builds a community. Right. None of it. Theory. Theory. No practice. Right, and 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 it's really like this is a real backdrop I got behind. But it's like watching somebody on social media talk about living a lavish lifestyle and they have a fake backdrop. And you the shit falls off and you see the holes in their wall. Mm -hmm. You see so you, know, you see all the different things. The facade is over. It's just let's go back to the Wizard of Oz. You get behind the curtain and you see, oh shit, this ain't no all almighty, all powerful guy. This is a dude playing a big ass joke. That's what the majority of us who go out and get these degrees become. Because we want to look. Look at social media right now. Social media in the time right now where the economy is tanking, you got roving bands right now of young people breaking into people's houses because the economy is in a bad, is in an all time crisis right now that nobody wants to acknowledge we're going through. We still want to be going, you know, I don't uh, catch feelings, I catch trips, I catch planes, I catch vacations. We want to be all those different things. I'm balling, I can make six figures. Really? Well, according no, to. No, 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 no. <laughs> According to the data, you know, no, less you than ten percent of people, period, make six figures. You know what I'm saying? But so, so I just happened to be in a circle of a, of, of that ten percent. You know, got this type of luck. I need to go play the lottery. Um, with these types of odds in my favor. So when when we look at that, man, you you look at the fact that the education is 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 basically a status symbol, status thing. I have a master's degree, doctor's degree. I have to, okay, but it, it's not done with a plan. College was, the yeah, but it, it also it also gets into the one we and we keep saying it's the brilliance of the system of white supremacy, the brilliance of the conditioning, the brilliance of the maintenance. Because yes, we're going to control every single aspect of your Negro lives, and then we're gonna we're even gonna let you think y'all got control and let you set up your own little Negro schools, but you're going to run them Negro schools the way we tell you to run them Negro schools. And the ones that's not under our jurisdiction, I mean, ain't like y'all got the resources to really keep up with us anyway. But but even in y'all little self-ran Negro schools that y'all fund for yourself, you, you, we've programmed your educators to program your future children to be our workers and to have, like, like uh, how did you Wilson say in the book? They have Eurocentric minds to create the Negro pins. Mm -hmm. 
there, there was a uh, I think I don't know why I can't remember the sister's name, but she was one of the people that was one of the log one of the loudest voices um, during the um, George Floyd protest, and uh, she was on the Breakfast Club defending Black Lives Matter. Um, Tamika Mallory. Tamika Mallory. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and um, she was talking about, and this is funny as hell. She was on that show defending them, talking about, you know, it's the reason why all these corporations are starting to make pledges towards, you know, black causes. It's because they got black VPs who went in there and demanded to their, you know, chairmen of the board that they better do A, B, and C to 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 show support for for Black Lives Matter and uh, show support for to fight justice and equality for black people. And I'm thinking, like, this is the this is the con game going on. Because you got these Negroes who sit in those seats, who make money, who create power, and drive force and force power, but they don't have no damn control. It's like being a coach of an NBA basketball team or the NFL, but you're not the owner. You ain't paying any salary. And at any given time, they don't care. You could just win a Super Bowl. Look at what happened in Chicago. Chicago, the Chicago Bulls won three championships. They got rid of the coach and the star players. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you don't have the power, then you are just a, a manipulative what? tool. And we don't have a culture of proliferation. Let's see. Like, like we don't practice cultural proliferation, but we don't have a plan. This is all well, survival. <laughs> I had it in my head earlier. I wouldn't, I was. But you, you made me say her name to make a matter because I forgot about her. I forgot her because I was just because 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 look, man, her and my son, you know, yeah, like commercial. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, but it's like, it, but it's not just it's not just them. But I I think it is it is it all it's the it's the miseducation playing itself out because they're not supposed to do any more than what they're doing. They're they're only supposed to be spokespersons. They're only supposed to be the people who get you inspired, to get you motivated, to to rally you up, to bring people together in crowds. It's only supposed to go that far, because these are not the same leaders that we had in the past. They're not coming. They're not being uh, pa- placed in positions of leadership the same way that they were in the past. They're not earning it the same way were in the past it's be be popular have a popular platform and now you are a leader speak out just just because think about it i think you know we was talking about on the phone the other day the if you are if you're a black celebrity and you don't speak out you are looked at as a horrible person you look at as a person who would support white supremacy republicans think it look at what they did to michael jordan they still be Talk about Michael Jordan. Now we found out behind the scenes Michael Jordan was doing uh things financially with his money and not saying Michael Jordan is no black savior or something, but it the thing is if you are speaking out, then you are for black people. You don't have to do a damn thing. Like you don't literally have to do anything tangible, but as long as you're speaking out, then you're down for the people. My bad. Well, I Why? think no, <laughs> I think the problem we have too is is like they can say things like people people like T- Tamika Mallory can say things like that, and nobody nobody can check her without being Can't called to the floor either, right? And I'm not even saying check her as in like come back aggressively. I'm saying check her as in like okay, did they really make these pledges for that reason? Like check what she's saying. Did they and 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 the next level of that? Who's holding them accountable when they make a pledge and don't actually follow through with the pledge? Like it, it's nice that you know uh, we'll put it in this analogy, right? Uh, you with a woman? Oh, I'm sorry, a woman's with a man, and a man say, "Baby, I'm so sorry. I never put my hands on you again." He just made a pledge, right? He just pledged to never put his hands on her again. Do 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 we all sit back now and give him credit for making that pledge? Is that how that works when you're dealing with an abusive situation? Because the relationship black people have with white America is very much an abusive situation. It's the same and thing. 
they keep pledging that they not going to do what they keep doing. And now we got people like, would you call that a good friend? If, 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 if you in a, a conversation with this person and you like that, they, they not doing enough. And this friend come around and she say, well, they pledged that they would never, ever, ever put their hands on us again. What, what would you say to that? Like, that's how, that's how all that stuff computes to me. I'm like, okay. So they, they said they would never do it again. But, but, Great. but what, what you what you are explaining is the role of a lot of the community leaders in black America, mainly like the, the pastors and, and uh, some of these business leaders and stuff who have financial ties and other type of ties with, with the system, with white supremacy, with people who practice white supremacy. So that's their job to assage the system and make it seem like we're the crazy ones. They're, like it's it's the same thing as like the 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 black people on YouTube who support the right wing, who support the Democrats. I mean, who support the Republicans, and because they support this party, they are, they have literally taken the stance to go against the left. And it's like all y'all dumb, all of y'all crazy, all y'all don't realize you are all pawns in the system, and that's just another another uh, thing to divide us. And we we're we're so divided as a group of people in america we're so divided it's not even fun like you said no black leader is respected no black i there's not one black leader or person who's looked at as leader who called himself a leader who wear a leader on their shirt or whatever you <laughs> might even whoever drink a leader right not one of those people who white america fears that will actually get people to neely fully even said it himself uh it was the um I think it was the Rock Newman interview. Neely Fuller was like, look, he understands his information. He understands how he inspired others because he's seen he's seen the fruits of his work. But he even said it out of his own mouth. People aren't taking action because of what I'm saying. So I'm not a threat. None of us are. Mm-hmm. We got to be yeah. honest with that. That's a right. part of the miseducation. Right. Well, we got professional gaslighters and the professional fire hose. Right. And so you have the Tamika Mallory's, the Mysons, and you got the, you know, other people who are out here who are trying to, you know, basically convince people to do things they don't have the courage to do. Um, and not only that, but then, but then in the same token, they're also the fire hoses because they'll have us going in and have us if we're following them going in a certain direction that is. But not beneficial to our cause, right? Which is out. It's like running into the desert to cut down trees. You know what I'm saying? They'll have this out. <laughs> no, it, it's like uh, remember uh Snoop Dogg was telling us um it was like, man, you know, one day me and the game, we just gotta be like, man, forget this cuz we gotta do something. We ain't know what we're gonna do, we just gonna do something, so we just gotta start walking and we just walk. And while next thing you know, we ended up at the police station. Not that this came in a relationship with the police. That's what happens when your ass <laughs> yep. don't have a plan and don't know how to be a leader. You went out yep. there throwing shit at the wall. And I don't think you could think of, hey, let's go be friends with the police. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and the important thing about that is it speaks to the fact of who's creating leaders now versus who actually propelled to create the leaders before. Before it was the people. Say that again. No, no, no. I can't let you go further until you say that again the same way you just said it and make sure you slow it down so people can hear what you, how you just said what you said. Because you say how you just said for a reason. We don't create the leaders today. We we don't. And and how they're created, they, they're not created by us. The one, the leaders in, of yesteryear were our leaders. They were our people. They were people that walked among the people, lived among the people. When Malcolm and uh, Dr. King and Stokely Carmichael and all these other people would go from place to place. They would be living in the homes. They didn't stay at a hotel. They lived in the homes of the people in those particular towns. They walked with the yes. people. They were of the yes. people. The people yes. were the ones that forced the movement. Yes. So look at all this, the smear campaigns and, and the character assassination campaigns, the, 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 the dirty tricks that were played. Look at all the poison pen letters that were put out there. Ain't nobody got to put a poison pen letter out here today. If you make any kind, any sense on these platforms, they'll just change the algorithm so nobody will hear you talking. But if right. they promote you to the algorithm, then you right. should know. This is, this, this is the enemy system. What we're on right now is the enemy system. 
it's Trust the reason me, I know. Channel, they, they keep, I know. They keep uh, blackballing your channel. I keep getting shadow banned and stuff. Because, and, and that's what? If the people were really who they say they were, they would be sharing it to alt to to, to recreate a new algorithm. But yeah. guess what? Yeah. Guess what? Gaslighters and fire hoses. We out in the uh we out in the desert looking to chop down pine trees. All right. You, 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 made, <laughs> you also made me and, and, and and this is a this is a tiny, tiny uh section of some of the people who comments, but it's like the people who who are in the comments, they will they will watch the video and then type their comment. And in the comment, they're saying, we need to stop talking and start doing stuff. But you took the time to comment. So what are you doing? We need to stop talking and do stuff where you can take time to comment instead of doing stuff. It goes back to what it's, you said. Yeah. It's the it's the superior inferior thing. They don't mm-hmm. feel powerful enough. They don't feel empowered enough because they're not white folks, and they don't feel empowered empowered enough to challenge white folks. Like Dr. Nullis, I mean, like Dr. Fuller said, I mean, not, not just Dr. Fuller, but Dr. Uh, Carter G. Whitson said, we have been programmed to look for that back door. And if the back door is yeah. not there, then we'll fucking we build created. one. So, and we have a bunch of people right now beating themselves in the head to get to that back door. And that's why they'll come here because we got the courage to say things people are, aren't normally going to say. And so, but they want that. So the, 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 that's the gaslight. The comment section is the gaslight. All right, I'm a gaslight y'all to say something that that you know. Next thing you know, next thing you know, you know we're the one we're going to deal with the consequences that they didn't have the courage to deal with, and that's but, the problem for so many people. But even another issue with not just it's it's comment sections. Period. The comment yeah. if you if you really want to feel divided from black people. Get in the comments and start commenting and start having conversations and arguing with people. Like it's social media period. It's not, I'm not just talking about my comment section. I'm just not just talking about YouTube. I'm just talking about black people in the comments. The inferior superior. I am more intelligent than you. So I have to win this. And you mm-hmm. have to lose because I have to show you and everybody else who's on this thread that I am superior to you. Yeah. Yeah, superior to us, inferior to the worshipful master. Um, and and you know that the, the scariest part about all of this is their contention for us will grow, while the affirmation, the need for affirmation of white folk will also grow. And then and it's that constant and continued cycle of delusion. Because who are we doing this shit for? Like I remember being on talk shows, being on radio shows. Where people would watch somebody debate somebody on CNN, debate Larry King or not Larry King, debate uh Bill Bill O'Reilly, debate you know uh any of those other talking here, and they would say that should have been me up there. I wish I would have been up there to debate him, because that's what you see. That's who you're going to measure yourself with. You're going to use that white man to see whether or not you got this. And then often time that white man undresses you because you're not as prepared as they are. <laughs> be mm-hmm. on that platform, and we've seen person the person that person go up and try and come back with the tail between their legs. And listen, if you want to do it, then build a debate team amongst your people, and then go up there. Don't but just go do it, bro. Not just, but you got to to do a debate. You got to be prepared, but you also have to know how like, how to present an argument. How yeah, to, that's yeah. a skill set. Yeah. So, um, but it can be done. And, and and we have the we have well I used to say we could we had the intellect to do it, but if we really had the intellect to do it, and 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 maybe some people will prove me wrong, it would have been done by now. I, I I just don't I don't think we have it in abundance because we know we we do we do know that we have some brilliant black people, but we don't have mm-hmm. enough. It's too many niggas. Uh, it made uh, white people uh, rich. What well, Erica Badu said: "Too many niggas and not enough master teachers." Look, man, no, and I don't, I don't even, cause, cause it's no, it, it's just too many nothing. Niggas. Yeah, cause we don't need no more people trying to become master teachers. Um, black people still operate off potential, like it's unrealized, 
but the potential is enough for us to be excited. You see a black kid and you like, he could be anything he want to be and you feel accomplished. Never That's mind. It, the yeah. fact, right. Like, okay, help him be what he want to be. Nah, just seeing him is enough. That And that goes into this mentality we have, right? If I could touch the life of one person, I've done enough. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. Touching the life of one person is not doing enough. You know how many people touched your life for you yeah, to still be a so bum? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not enough. No. It's a continuous you, process. Right. You need you a farmer can't be like as long as I touch the soil that the seed is gonna be planted in. That's enough. No, it's not. You gotta work the ground. You gotta you gotta make the the, the, the crops grow. You gotta to yield something, you gotta build and pour into something. So we the whole mentality is broken from the ground up, and that's because well, right. but but yes, it is broken. Yes, it is broken, and I think I, I really do think we have to be honest about where we are. The majority of us are not with us are not going to make it the majority of us are far are too far gone the negatory is too great and we have to we have to stop trying to convince ourselves that a mass that the great mass or the majority of black people would get our stuff together i mean the regression <laughs> has happened too greatly now we have to look at we have to still be in this in the mindset of these critical mass looking at looking at those who actually give a damn and those who can do stuff because it's because we the people who just give a damn y'all ain't doing nothing either y'all not help but, if you but, just give a damn like what are you tangibly actively doing after you give a damn Mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe I've soured on this whole thing because I used to be real optimistic and Pat would be like, wait, wait, just wait. And I was just yeah. like, nah, Pat, this shit's going to work. He do that shit to all of us. <laughs> <laughs> like, Pat, it's going to happen this time. He's like, That's nah, a Mr. Man. Pat. You know, and I'd be like, nah, Pat, for real, man. I, it never happened. I'd be sitting there bitching to him. He, he just, he don't say shit. He just like, yeah, well, you know. Man. What you want to do, right? <laughs> and so, I'm kind of like at that point right now, like, Honestly speaking, I think the best thing we could do is build healthy black families. Mm -hmm. All this nation building shit. How are you going to build a nation when your house is in shambles? How are you going to build a nation when you don't have the ability to control the, the, the people that live under you. The, the four walls and the roof that you occupy? Take um, care of your space. And, and empower. You. you know, take time out. Black people, fuck all this community shit. Work with your children. You out there talking about fight the power and your children in the house getting electrocuted because they don't understand how the power works. Mm -hmm. Oh, they teach can't read because you ain't got no power. Look. Right. Teach. Look. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> teach them. You, you know, we got people talking about the state of Florida just decided they're not going to teach the African American curriculum. Well, guess what? Bitch. Do you know it? <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. So what Ron DeSantis said, you can't teach this shit in his schools. Okay, so you mean so you mean to tell me that all us educated folk down here in Florida that we can't teach yes our own Joe. history. Yes, that's what we mean to church. tell you. Yes, that's hey, what we hey, mean hey, to tell you. Hey. Well, nigga, well, niggas is over. You got all it's this. It's, it's time for self accountability. Cause, look, because I'm I am in Tallahassee, mm -hmm. on the shoulders of giants. Home base is in Tallahassee, which is why you should know better. <laughs> is that the state capital? It's the <laughs> state mean? capital. Look, look. <laughs> I, I I can walk to the governor's mansion. I can walk to the Capitol building from my job. I'm just that close. I'm 15 minutes from my house. Everything everything is 15 minutes away in Tallahassee. There's nobody black in Tallahassee who should be saying we do not have access to black history when my ass is right here. And motherfuckers oh. know about me here. Everybody knows 
what Joseph Ward does. Hold on, Joe, because I'm going to call some people out in Tallahassee. Because my brother was down there trying to build with some elders down there who was part of the Tyler, like the, the historical society. And, and, and they gatekeep him. He's out here doing the work and touch people on these campuses, work with the children, walking in, from the campuses to the damn project. And they gatekeep him. Yeah. Because they wanted to maintain some sort of elitist prestige about their fucking dying institution. They're not bringing no young people in. These motherfuckers in their 70s. But this is the this is the shit that we're talking about. That Dr. Carter G. Woodson talking about. The back door we keep looking for. And so this is what we're talking about in terms of uh, in building. Florida has all this open space. I've been to Florida before. Has all these open spaces. You can have a thing. You get got kids together to play football. Y'all can actually have all the cookouts and barbecues you want. Take some time out. An hour <laughs> of freaking the Saturday. Use the same structures to get the kids together to teach black history. The same, the same football coaches. All you got to do is bring them out. I take it from there. Negro go to a barber shop and teach on a fucking Saturday. Whatever you got to do. Look, I'm I'm gonna just say this, right? Because I was having this conversation earlier today with somebody. Cause they said the same thing y'all just said. Man, Pat, your ass so negative. You ain't, and I, I just, but then they had to say the same thing too. But you was right though. Look, I watch people. That's <laughs> all I, I'm real good at watching and reading people, right? PC, the story you just told is exactly why Joe should know better. Because the people in power, and I, I know, know Joe, Joe, I know you know better. I know you know better. I'm being silly right now. I know. But I'm pointing out for the people that 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 honestly, like for those of you that honestly think that you can gain traction by, uh, you, you think you're going to go into the establishment and get the establishment to change by yourself? Okay. I'm going to go change things. As soon as you right. leave, we go right back. It, it don't change. Look, it's the, it's like, you know, everybody know the saying, the devil don't change, he changes you. Half of the black people that end up working for the law enforcement and these government agencies and these mega corporations, half of, I say 70% of them go into them with dreams of changing shit. They all going to be the, 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 the Jackie Robinson of their industry. And they end up becoming the Jackie Robinson of the industry. Of the industry, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to change the world to a, well, I just want a pension and a retirement plan. Right. I'll get two more years. I get that. I ain't got to work no more. Right. I, you, you, you go in saying, I'm going to make the world a better place. And I'm going to open all these doors for my people. And only thing ends up happening is the buildings that your people own get shut down and your people are forced to come into those doors for pennies on the dollar to accept wages and the loss of freedom, creativity, power, and drive. And you ushered that in. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We think economics is going to change things. What really changes things is culture. And you know how powerful your culture is by which culture absorbs the other culture. The other culture. Okay. And every time black people go into something, we get absorbed by the collective we become part they utilize our skills this shit is like the borg off of star trek every time we go somewhere they utilize our skills we become the mayor of a city next thing you know with the mayor oh you came in your campaign promises you were going to build these community centers you were going to create access great jobs in the black community this down the other what happened well you know i gotta answer this one over here i gotta answer this one over here basically you gotta kiss a lot of ass to be the boss so Look, <laughs> you just said it though you just said it so we know we we we've we got enough information to see that education by itself would not uplift Black America. We got enough information to see that economics, a la starting businesses, starting businesses, will not uplift Black America. We still, but what we don't understand is economics and education without structure, without codification, without culture, is nothing. It, it doesn't help. It's not going to propel us for it. It only makes us feel good. It's, it's, it's a drug. It's the weed that you roll up and smoke and make you feel good. But once you come down from that hot, guess what? Your ass is still in the same place. 
Nothing's changed. So yeah, the miseducation of the Negro is real and it's continuing to play itself out because those of us with our degrees who thought that because we were educated that we were better than other black people and we gonna make stuff change we gonna change this and change that we we became the exact thing that the white supremacy system designed us to be just niggas who went to college Because remember, niggas are destructive people. So we have to, those of us who want to, we have to reverse that niggotry and become black people. Reversing it. We're not all the way out the woods just because we'll be talking like this. We ain't all the way out the woods because, hey, if we was all the way out the woods, we would have better results. I'm just saying, ain't nobody safe in this. Yeah, we get it too. Ain't nobody safe in this. Because shit, if we had the answers, God damn it, I asked wouldn't be sitting here on goddamn stream yard. <laughs> <laughs> we, do, we, we could give you more if we had better answers all right nobody has the answers and i think we need to be honest about that too none of us have the answers we only have theories of what we think the answers are so yeah joseph ward patrick Irvin, professor carlton jones this is breakdown friday this is how we do it and support 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 all the supporting links are in the description remember like this video hit that like button Hit that goddamn on like button, share this video, put sensible comments in the comments. And once again, <laughs> once again, if you're replying to something specific, please reference to what you are replying to, because a lot of times I have no idea what you're talking about. This video is going to be over an hour. You can't just say something. I have no idea what you're talking about. Please put a timestamp or reference to something. Please, 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 please. So we can have some good dialogue. But till then, See y'all later. Catch the next video coming up.